Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our very first REI meetup, where we deal with wholesaling all the time, <laughs> right? Residential and commercial, but also, you know, fix and flip, new construction, things of that nature, but primarily doing a lot of wholesaling. So I know a lot of people who join this particular group is going to be probably new to investing. So we're going to kind of tailor everything that we do to help you guys get from A to Z without trying to sell you something, right? So you can put your, put your money in your pocket, keep it in your pocket, you know what I'm saying? Use that for some ice cream for the kids or whatever the case is, or the wife, right? The game we're going to try to give you guys is, is you know, you can take this and run with it, you know? Um, and if you have some, if we, you hear something that you don't quite agree with, just keep it honest, step up and tell us what we're doing a little different, right? Tell us what we can do to kind of make our um, businesses go a little smoother. I'm, we're not, I'm not um, in a position to kind of kick your information to the side and focus only on mine. If you got something to bring to the table, please do. Please do. So with that being said, I'm going to introduce you to my partner, Mr. Jason. He is the CEO of New Way Invest, Investing. Investing. New Way, New Way, Way Investment, Investment Group. <laughs> yeah. Investment group. What, one of them. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Hustler as well, man. So i tell you what, let's do this. Let's start this thing off like this. Um. Let me pull this up here. Let's start this thing off right. Because I want, you know, I want you guys to introduce yourself, man. I want to know who we're talking to. Um, you know, let me see. I had it set up, but you know how that go? Let me see here if I can find it now, man. I probably can't find it now. Yeah, that's how it go. All right. Can you guys see my screen here? Yeah, I can. Oh, uh, yeah, I can see it. Okay. So, so, you know, go ahead if you, you know, jump on this real quick. Tell us uh, what is your name, you know, what city you're logging in from, what kind of investing you're trying to do. Um, you know, a couple of things here. Tell us a little bit about you. Anybody, anybody can jump right in. All right, my name is Antonio. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm from Kansas City, but I live in Dallas, Texas. Uh, uh, I'm actually in uh, in investing. Well, not in investing. I'm sorry. I'm in banking. Uh, yeah, I come into lending, and I'm looking to get into you know the the, uh, the real estate investment space. Man. Sorry, about that. Yeah, I know I'm not a you, so uh, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm interested in learning about home level fix and flips and just like. You know, I'm just trying to learn as much about the, the space because, uh, you know, I want to make some deals myself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, welcome, you know. So are you are you already in real estate currently or are you, you're new? No, I'm currently in alternative lending. So okay. I do uh, loans and I, I help people get funded. Businesses, not in, nothing personal. Business, but uh, that's pretty much all I do right now. Uh, I want to actually. Uh, I got a new partner who who uh, specializes in uh, mortgages, so I'm I'm looking for myself to invest in okay. fix and flips, multi unit, multi you know, more doors. Okay. Well, well, welcome. Um, definitely leave. Your, you know, your name and everything in the chat, your email address, the best way to get in contact with you. So if anybody that comes on, man, who needs your services, man, you know, you know, connect, man. That's what we kind of encouraging everybody to do is connect. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, again, my name is Antonio. Uh, my email address is Antonio. Can you drop, drop, it in the chat. drop it in the chat. Oh, okay. In the chat. Okay, okay. Hey, man, Got I appreciate it. you. I don't have my moderator with me, but if she did, she could do it for me. So, but you go ahead and put that in there, man, and I'll make sure, I, you know, I'll send it out to everybody who's part of this call. Okay? Thank you for having me. Hey, man, anytime, man. Appreciate you coming on. All right? Who's next? Yeah. So, who's next, guys? No, I can I can go. Um, <clears throat> so, I'm Devony. And, uh, welcome. hey, how you doing, I'm doing man? So yeah, I, I came across, um, I basically was looking for like-minded people. And so I just look around and meet up and I saw you guys name. And so um, I have another buddy who joined the group as well. Um, but, you know, we've been just trying to uh, 
you know, learn more about, you know, real estate, really invest in, right? So we have some vague ideas. I have one property right now myself, um, but, you know, that's it. And uh, what, what is the question you got here? Let me see. So, uh, what city are you currently invested in? Or do you have your property in? I'm in Dallas. So I have one in Fort Worth, but uh, the city that I currently live is in, is in Dallas. Okay. And what are you interested in learning most about? Yeah, I want to I learn everything. <laughs> yeah, I want to <laughs> okay. learn okay. everything. <laughs> Hey, you're not wrong with it, man. You know, you, you, if you have that tool in your in your toolbox, whenever that problem comes up, you you'll be able to deal with it. All right. right. So, hey, man. Salute to you, man. Appreciate you coming on. All right, no problem. Um, who, who's next? Who next one? Who want to jump on next? I can't really see it on my screen. Jason, if you can see it on the screen, hey. go ahead and call out their name if you could. Mister Mister Charles. Uh, yeah. Hi. What's up, buddy? Yeah, I'm doing great. So, um. I'm Charles. Um, I live in Evan, um, near Dallas. Um, I'm really new to all this, so uh, ideally go into um, like multifamily or even apartment. But I'm pretty new to it. I have no idea what I'm doing. So me I'm neither. To learn stuff. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey, you're just honest, man. <laughs> That's what's up, man. But <laughs> none of us knew anything before we got into it. Right. So the thing about it, man, is you learn as much as you can, get around some other people who are actually doing it and, mm -hmm. you know, glean from them. That's the key to this thing. And get you a couple of books. Get you yeah. some books, man. You know what I'm saying? Go to so, have so, bookstore. so Go um, I, I read um, this book, Melonia Real Estate. Right. I, I at least got that one down. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I got quite so, a bit of them around here, bro. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, I'm trying to learn as much as I can. And then I've also been watching the market through Zillow um, mm -hmm. for the past um, couple, like, past couple of years, like from 2020 up to date, I've been watching, but I think I made a lot of mistakes. Um, I should have purchased a property in 2020, looking at the exchange rate and all that. But once it, it went up, I realized that, okay, I think I made a mistake. I should have bought, it, bought something like way back in 2020 or 2021 at least, and I didn't. I was just waiting for market to crash or something. And, uh, I guess I didn't know what I was doing. So I'm just trying to, you know, uh, learn from other people, and see how I can do it. Um, so that's why I'm here. Well, well you're definitely at the right place. Um, we, we do um, some uh, multifamily as well, uh, trailer park, storage facilities, things of that nature, and land as well. Okay. And, you know, multifamily. One thing I haven't did, done is a, a mixed use um, commercial property but have you, have you ever heard of the, the, this, this thing called a master lease option yeah i've heard about it i read about it yeah so what i'm kind of doing right now i'm special kind of specializing in like 20 units and under so anywhere between five and 20 units i'm looking uh -huh. to find some master lease options to do it that okay. way because you know we, we could definitely talk about that for sure and that's, that's, all right it's definitely gonna be one of the, the topics that we bring up in, in some future um meetups so definitely stay okay. on, man. If you know anybody that want to come on, bring them on as well. Okay. All right. Appreciate All you, right. sir. Who Thank else, you. Who else left? You're welcome. Got one more person, and you can beat me up later if I pronounce your name wrong, but Shuby? Yes, this is Shuby. Hey. hey. Hello. Hey, everybody. How are you? Good. How are you, sir? Doing great. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So I am... Oh, I got my alarm on. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that was just telling you to make sure you log in with us. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> As a reminder, second reminder. So I have tried to do get some uh, rental uh, apartments to lease out, but I just couldn't. And I'm uh, trying to see if I can do some um, multi-family homes, which uh, is not in the market for some reason. So. I'm trying to see if there is something close to my, like, residence. I live in Dallas, so I'm thinking somewhere close to Dallas would be good. Okay, excellent. So a lot of people here from Dallas. That's 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 awesome. That's awesome. So where are you looking? Where are you looking to um to do some investing? Is it just in your market or other states or? Uh, just in my market for right now, because I'm trying to get my foot in and see if I like it begin with something and uh, if i like it i'll stay longer and invest more okay. just see if i can get it done oh excellent excellent 
But well, we really appreciate you logging in with us. Thank and you. Uh, so, w what I do uh, specifically, um, I lead up acquisition for my buying partner. So I'm a wholesaler, uh, but I'm I'm actually I'm a virtual wholesaler as well. So wherever the deal is at is where I go, right? So a lot of the time, well, I say ninety probably ninety five percent of the time, I don't see the properties that I'm wholesaling. Right, okay. um, it's ways to, to get that stuff done without actually physically being there, right? Okay. And I know, I know my partner here. He kind of does the same. So, kind of tell a little bit about what you do, uh, Jason. Uh, if you name it, I do it. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, one of the the main things I do is is wholesaling. That's our number one ground level floor of real estate, um, because that particular part of the business is basically where your marketing is. And from there, what we do is we take that market and we decide, hey, this would be a wholesale deal or we'll keep this deal and do it as a fix and flip. Or we would actually um, keep that rental as a buy and hold. So we determine what our strategy is based off of what we're doing for for wholesaling. And then we decide what we're going to do with that property based on the different strategies and opportunities that present themselves to us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. One of the things, one of the things I would say, if you, you knew or if you've been in it for a while, um, the, the thing to this, I think, to this business is making yourself a hub, right? If if you know other people who, who are wholesaling or who are investing or whatever the case is, try to put yourself in a position to where um, if something needs to be done, they can say, hey, let me call Jay and see if he knows somebody that does this. Because what happens is when you, you help enough people get what they want, you eventually get what you want. Right. That's that's the whole game. So you need to get around people who are like minded thinkers. We like I said, read you some books, talk to some people, continue to come to REI meetups and things of that nature. And we can do them virtually now. So you, I can literally go to all of them in my in this whole Metro Plus. Now. <laughs> so within seconds, do that. It's very important. It's very important. All right. Any any more things before we jump into the quick interview, Jason? Uh, no, actually, I was just taking some notes from each one of you guys, because I want to make sure that this is not just some meeting. And, and I don't know if you guys have ever actually been to a, um, the, these real estate meetings. And when you go to the groups, again, we're here. And like Jay said, we're not trying to pitch you anything. I want to know exactly what it is that you want to do to help you achieve your actual goals. And I believe that's the same um, meshing mind and, and idea that Jay has as well. So those things that you, you mentioned, we want to make sure we touch those topics. If not in this meeting, in a, in a, a subsequent meeting after this, uh, to help you reach whatever that goal is that you're trying to achieve. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so my thing would be is, I mean, I've heard that before, right? I've been to different places and you hear people pitch you these things and for, you know, Hey, we got this course for such and such, such and such. That's not the case. As you will see, this is what we do. And we're just trying to give back, right? There's a, there's a lot of us um, well, I tell you what, I've been in that situation where I, you know, I'm trying to get into wholesaling. I have a question and I, there's nobody I can go to, right? Or no, no way, no, no, no avenue I can go to actually uh, get the information I need. So I'm on YouTube University, right? And I'm learning as I'm going, I'm stumbling and all kinds of stuff. But if you can just post something or send a, a quick test to our group chat, uh, or not group chat, but group, um, Facebook group, somebody jump on that answer for you really quick. So it's, it's, it's mid city. Uh, we got a new, I got a new one now, Mid City Network is what it is. So we're going to have some different shows and things of that nature um, that's going to be coming up here pretty soon. All right, we got, I got a question here from Antonio. Mr. Antonio, you got your hands up? Y'all yeah, just wanted to know, um, so are y'all in, Jay, are you in, in Dallas? And Jason, are you in Dallas? Correct. Yeah, I'm in Dallas. Yeah, I'm in Dallas County. I'm in Lancaster, but I'm in Dallas County. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually in Carrollton. I'm in Carrollton. I'm in Jim County. Okay, because I'm new to, like I said, I'm new to this city, this market, and I'm just, I'm trying to learn as much as I can. So I'm going to, you know, like you said, like, being around like-minded people, I just want to run with people who, you know, are in this space so I can learn as much as I can. I'm looking for something like a mentor. Yeah. 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 That you came to the right place, but and Absolutely. I mean, you've been from Kansas City. I mean, we're I'm actually marketing in Kansas City right now, uh, and some of my other mentees are actually out there uh, making a killing. So, um, whatever you need, brother, just reach out. Absolutely, absolutely. So make sure you guys go. To, make sure you guys go to Mid City um, Network. 
on Facebook group and I'll add you guys to it and post your questions, whatever the case, what you got going on. If if I don't see it, probably Jason to see it. If, if you don't see it, my assistant to see it, we'll make sure you get the answers that you need. All right. All right. So let's let's jump through this real quick before we get to the interview, uh Jason. So at this point here, um well normally what we'll be doing is we have a realtor come on to give us the real estate state of the union. Right. A lot of times real estate real estate um uh, agents get a lot of information before we receive it, right? A lot of times that's the case. So, and we want to know how to work with real estate agents too. So when you, when you find your good real estate um, agent that understands what you do in this business, it's going to make your life a whole lot easier, right? So we, we will have him on here for maybe, have him or her on here for maybe 15, 20 minutes to give us that information, drop some tools, um, some jewels or whatever the case is to make your life a lot better. All right. So unfortunately, we'll have one here today. Right. And then the next one, we may have a title company that comes on to show you, to tell you some different things that they're able to do for you to get your deals in and get them out as quickly as possible. Um, one, of the, one thing happened to me one time. I was doing a deal in Michigan and caught contact this title company I'd never worked with before. But they told me, hey, yes, we do. We deal with wholesaling. We do this, this and this. And so everything was cool. The, the title work was clear, ready to close a couple of days. They called me right before, um, right before we were going to close, maybe four or five days and say, hey, man, we can't do these type of deals. I don't know who told you that, right? And it destroyed my deal, right? So I made a vow that it never happened to me again, you know what I'm saying? So I lost my buyer. And, and that particular deal at that time was I was dealing with uh, one, of, one of my students at that time. So I'm pretty sure he or she was probably mad at me, but it was, it wasn't, it was beyond my control. So my thing is you want to make sure that you, you talk to these people, these title companies, and get the information that you need. Talk to the person you need to talk to. Ask them all the questions you need to ask them before you send them your file. And unfortunately, the day, I think it was the day, uh, it was the day um, before we were supposed to close, um, after we were supposed to close, um, my contract ended. So once that deal went through, I couldn't even go back to the seller to try to read. He wasn't having it. So you would never want to be in that situation. So the title company that we're working with now are able to close in 50 states. So you, you deal with one title company and they take care of all your deals. If you're, especially that works great if you're a virtual wholesaler. So, and then I will be next, what, next uh, month or whatever, I will give you guys that information. All right. All right. So let's jump right into this. So as you guys, you already met Jason. Uh, Jason Sims, man, this is a go-getter here. I've learned a lot of stuff from Jason that I use to this day. I probably owe you a check, Jason. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's talk to Jason a little bit, man. Jason, so tell me a little bit about your background, man. Where, where you from? All that good stuff. Uh, I'm from Dallas. Um, born and raised in Dallas. Um, and I left to uh, join the Marine Corps in 1998. And so I did six years in the Marine Corps. Uh, came back home. I was actually a recruiter for a little while. Uh, back in Dallas, believe it or not. And um, after I uh, got discharged, I started working various jobs um, at certain banks and then uh, some other side end things. Um, and then I got laid off, man. This, this is where the real estate uh, starts to happen in uh, 2004, which is when I actually got started in real estate, man. I was broke, laid off on unemployment, um, up watching TV, uh, late night, this is when infomercials were hot, right? <laughs> so I'm watching TV trying to worry about how I'm going to pay the the rent and the bills for the the, the next coming month. And uh, infomercial came on about um, Robert G. Allen. And uh, he's one of the, the old heads of uh, zero down real estate cash out, right? And of course, I didn't have no money to buy the course. And uh, while out looking for uh, jobs to submit to the workers commission so I could get that little check every month. Um, I would go to um, what's it half price books and I'd sit on the floor in there, man, and read books about real estate. And so that's where the journey actually started. That's where it actually happened um, back in 2004. Wow. Wow. So how long did it take you um, to realize that this is it? This is, this, um, is, this is my niche. That night on that infomercial, um, and th because I always knew that real estate was one of those things that most of the people would talk about. Now I say talk because that's what they were doing. They were talking about it. They weren't doing it. They were talking about it. So there had to be something to it. Um, and then 
it took me a year to do my first deal, a whole year. And it wasn't until I did that first deal and realized that, you know what, there's no turning back now. Wow. You know, there's no turn. And now I'll tell you, I made a whole whopping 500 bucks on that deal, too. Okay? <laughs> you rich. Yeah, <laughs> you rich. rich, man. You can retire now, man. Yeah, like my mentors Absolutely. say, you know, hey, here, here's 500 bucks. Um, and don't spend it all in one place because we got other work to do. <laughs> you got work so to do. That, that's where it started, man, with, with a $500 check um, off of a wholesale deal. Wow. I I, I think about, man, um, when I was taking this, when I first started, right, I'm taking all this information in. When I finally sat down and actually talked to a seller, negotiated the contract, and actually got a check, it really wasn't about the check, really. I mean, that was cool. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, man, I, you know, to think of something, all of a sudden now it's something in my hand that's tangible, right, that I can hold. Right. But now it was like, it's over. Because yeah. I was used to doing physical labor, right? <laughs> now I could just think and write something on a contract and now I'll get paid. That's a, it's like mind blow, you know? So how do, what do you spend all that money on, man? Well, actually, I well I had to pay bills, man. But at the same time, <laughs> absolutely, um, I, I still kept going back to uh, Half Price Bookstore, and I ran across this guy. And he said, "Hey, man, you should come to this meeting." So there was a group. It's no longer here anymore. It was uh, DFW Ren, DFW Real Estate Investors Network, which is out there off of um, Thirty Five um, Farmers Branch area. And so I decided to go, and I went. And um, I came up with some additional funds. Okay, I borrowed it, but I came up with some additional funds and got into um, Kathy Crow. You, you probably know her, Jay. Um, and got into her mentorship program. And that's where it all started. And as I was networking, I met this guy at one of the meetings and I said, hey, if you teach me everything that you know about real estate, I'll pay you 50% of each one of my deals for a whole year. And that's what he did. And that's how it got started. Wow. Wow. That's, that's pretty deep. Who, who really thinks of that, right? Um, and who, who really, as a mentor, kind of takes that, especially when, you, when you're accustomed to making money? What, was he already a mentor? Did he have like a course already? Or he no. just said, you know what, I'm going to take you. Mm -mm. Okay, so that was no. what I asked. I asked. Yeah. I asked. Yeah. Uh, and I'll be honest with you. He wasn't, it wasn't the first person that I asked. I can't even remember how many people that I did ask. Wow. Uh, and finally, somebody said, you know what? Sure. Why not? Man. And that that's how we got started. That's what it takes, man. See, now, how many people are willing to actually do that? To pull people to the side? Listen, I need help. But a lot of people, just they want to say it, but they actually don't say it. You said you said it so much. You don't even know how many people you talk. Yeah, to. I don't know how many people I talk to. <laughs> to somebody said yes. Somebody said yes, man. That's how it is in, in wholesale. You got to knock on so many doors, make so many calls, make so many bl uh, blast texts before somebody finally said yes. Mm -hmm. So you said a whole year before your first deal. A whole year before my first deal. Now, that, that was I, I did that deal before I found him. Gotcha. Um, and that's why I only made 500 bucks. Yeah. OK, because <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize that I had did it all wrong. I still earned some money doing it but I did everything all wrong because that $500 check, when I went over the deal with him, he said, well, that should have been six to 10. Wow. So I missed, I, I screwed it up. You know, I screwed the pooch, um, but I still earn, you know, 500 bucks. It, 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 I remember that on my, my very first deal was four deals in one. And I, I think I only made like 14 grand, on it, but I didn't uh, understand what I had. I had, yeah. it was, it was a three small houses and it was a corner, a corner store. So my first, really first deal was a commercial deal, right? Mm -hmm. But I didn't know how to price it. I priced it so low thinking she was going to say, hoping she said no, because I didn't know how to do it. It was a virtual deal. I only right. made 14 grand on it. Looking back on it now, I suppose I made that off one deal. Yeah. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So yeah. Wow. 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 But I learned from it. I learned how to price it. I was able to walk away from the job and, and do my thing. So so when you when you got with this, this mentor, how 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 long did it take you to get that next deal? Uh, that took me about I'd say six months. About six months. Was mm -hmm. you really hustling for that six months? It's kind of sort of because I was still I had then at that time found a job too, right? Because okay. remember I was unemployed. Okay. Uh, you know that five hundred dollars wasn't enough to even pay the the, the rent that month. Yeah. Um. So, um, it, it took me you know a few a few months six months. Um. But yeah, I was out doing driving for dollars 
um because that was the thing back then right yeah. wholesaling wasn't wholesaling when i started this is the name that's been given to it when i first started it was just called flipping yeah yeah okay it it, it was just called flipping it wasn't called um wholesaling you know, wholesaling is, is a name that was given to it after the networks took on HGTV and started calling the, the fix and flips flipping. Because back then we called fix and flips rehabs, yep. you know, <laughs> so, you know, yeah. everything has changed and evolved into to something totally different. Um, but, yeah, it took it took me a good minute. But, yeah, I was out there uh, when I was going to work. I take different routes home to, to look for houses and writing them down by paper. You know, I still had an old flip Metro PCS uh, 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 cell phone. So, you know, no smartphone and none of that stuff. All the things that we have now, man, it was, you know, that, that we didn't have any of that stuff back yeah. then, you know. It's amazing how much stuff we have at our fingertips. Now. Yeah. It's amazing. And, and they're you, tools. And it makes the job easier now. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's, this, the work still has to go into it. Yeah. And, and what's crazy now, you can actually drive for dollars um on your phone <laughs> on your on your laptop right. or whatever the case is so but man okay so let's fast forward to um what's the worst deal you ever done what what what, what made you almost earl man you know what i don't know that there's a worse deal i think there's i think that's a seller issue in in, in most cases um because if we still call it a deal that means we closed it right um it wasn't one that, yeah, we still won on it. But I'll tell you, this was an actual, a, a creative uh, deal, which is the worst one. So we took over a property, uh, subject to, and we'll get into subject to probably in another session or something like that. We took over this property subject to, um, gave the homeowner some money in his pocket. They didn't have anywhere to go. So we gave them a hotel. We paid for a hotel for a whole week while they made that decision of where they were going to, to live. And when we were getting ready, the contractor went back over and they had moved out. We helped them move. We put their things in storage. We paid for the storage for a whole month. Look, we, we went all out on this, right? Because wow. they were going to lose the house. And um, the contractor goes over there so they can start giving us bid on the property. They had moved back in. Mm. They moved back in and moved their stuff out of the storage back to the house <laughs> and some additional junk that was actually out in the yard as well, man. So it, it looked even worse um, after we helped them move and get that stuff cleaned up than it did when we went back. Wow, man. Yeah, so we, we wow. yeah. I've then never we heard that happening, man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, okay. um, you know, wow. and, and again, we keep going because now that they've moved back in, now we've got to go to court. Yeah. Because now we've got to go through the eviction process. <sighs> and this what is- state, uh, What state was it in? That was here. That was this is in Garland. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is in Garland. And so now we got to wait for that to go through before we can do that. And now, so it's, it was a big ordeal, man. So we're paying, you know, we're, we've been paying the mortgage on a property that we're not rehabbing, um, that we got people living into and paying, you know, for the constables and all of this stuff to be able to come out and get this crap out of there, man. Man. That's a that's a that's a war story right there. Yeah. All right. So tell me what was the biggest deal you ever closed? The biggest deal. Uh, Wholesale or anything. One. anything. Okay. Um that check was 90, 90 something thousand. Okay, walk us through this. <laughs> walk us um, through a ninety three thousand dollar deal. Actually, you know what? Let me let me I'm gonna pull it up right quick here. Let me see if I can. Because that one I took over um taxes were owed on that property um taxes were owed on that property and we got it for free okay well besides me paying my attorney you know 700 and something dollars to get all the paperwork and all of those things done but um we we took that deal over 700 bucks to the attorney so we got it for free owner transferred it over to us they owe like forty three thousand in taxes on it okay the, the city, it was also on the city condemnation list, meaning that it was on the teardown list. Okay. Um, so they were going to tear it down. I was able to get the city to postpone the foreclosure of the taxes. And I was able to get the city to postpone the uh, demolition of the property. 
we went in, we rehabbed that house. Um, $60,000 later, we put it on the market. Um, it, it took us a year on this house because we had to gut it. I mean, everything was brand new in this house. Um, and then we put it back on the market, asking price. We got full asking. And uh, that's the check, buddy. Man, 90K. So mm -hmm. Definitely. So if you didn't know how to do <clears throat> subject to, you couldn't even did it. You couldn't have done the deal. Well, this one wasn't completely subject to. Okay. This was um, this was just me taking over ownership. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. I just took I took over ownership on that one. Um, we did do a subject to shortly after that one while we were still working on that property. I did a subject to. Um, I pretty much got that one for free too. She didn't want it anymore, um, and we made what about forty forty something thousand on that house. That was a wholesale deal. We took it over subject to. We were going to keep it. One of my buyers called me and said, hey, Jason, I got this money in this 1031 exchange and I've got to get rid of it before I have to pay, you know, the tax man. Yep. And I said, hey, man, I was going to keep this house. And he said, well, do, do me a solid and I'll do you another solid later. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, so um, I sold it to him. We picked it up for what she owed on it. Before we made the first payment to the bank to bring it back current, um, he came along. And I assigned it, uh, I went, in, cause I owned it at that point. Cause I took it over subject to. So I went ahead and did a um, purchase and sell agreement with him for 114. Come to find out the homeowner actually owed less than what we thought she owed. Wow. <laughs> and um, we ended up walking away with 43, a little over 43,000 for that property on the wholesale deal. The one thing you don't hear about um, is that you have to, when you get in this business, the only thing a person really know about or trying to get to know about is just regular wholesaling. You know, and if, if that's all you know, you really in a bad situation. You kind of have to know other ways to get deals done creatively, whether it's a subject to owner finance, uh, lease option, land contract, master lease option, or whatever it is, you got to kind of know that. Um, all that right so also if you do decide to get you a mentor make sure they understand that part too because sometimes um i mean i've run across a deal where the deal was upside down as a wholesaler there's nothing i can do but as a creative guy who does things i know i can do a, a owner finance on this deal as long as you know get the terms or um or the price down i still get it done so it's many ways to do a deal right you know so post it on our group if you got a deal like that, hey, man, how can we get this done? And if I can see a way you guys can get it done, I'll quickly get on there and say, look, do it this way and get it done for you, right? Yeah. So, man, so that's that's huge, man. So so now where you at now, man, so you've you been you doing some stuff out, out of Dallas now. So you're in different markets now. And yeah. Could, let me ask you a quick question. So could somebody hire you to go back to work for them? They can't afford me. <laughs> I, exactly. I'm, exactly uh, bro. I'm unhirable. You're unhirable. Okay. I'm unhirable, unemployable. Man, that's that's where you want to be, guys. Because you in this business, you get truly what you're worth. If you don't put the time and the efforts in, because you know most people do just enough to fail, right? So you, you you know this is possible. You see people actually doing it. What are you what are you gonna do to become successful? If you want somebody to pick that boulder up for you and carry it, that's not how that works. You know, you gotta have people to say, look, while you got it in your hand, if I was you, I'd go left because there's a there's there's something in front of you, they would do that, but they're not gonna pick it up and take it for yourself. Not right. even your mentor. You know, if you're paying a mentor to do that for you, you're in the wrong business, man. So yep. so I just want to let you guys know. But man, listen, again, man, if you if you guys, if you guys understand follow Jason, Jason. I know I put you on the spot when I tell you that. <laughs> I didn't get in contact with you, Jason. <laughs> so. It's uh, it's it's probably. Let me give you. I'll give you. I'll give you guys the phone number. I'll put it in the chat. Um, it's probably best to to call me, um, or, or email me. So I'll definitely put that information in the chat for you. Um, but if you look up New Way Investment Group on on Facebook, um, definitely. I don't. I don't check. Facebook that much unless it's a direct message to me um, or in one of the groups that that I service or answer questions to. But um, definitely I'll put the phone number and um, my um, email address inside of there. Probably easier to get me on on email for sure. Yeah. See, see, see Jason is like a, a technical guy. He's he's he know what what software to use. He knows what 
with things, you know, different things to use it to accomplish the goal, man. So definitely, man, you know, get with them, man. And if you got questions, that's what we're here for, to answer your questions. So, man, really appreciate it. I know it wasn't an in-depth interview, but I just want to introduce everybody to you, right? Yeah. So, hey, man. All right, so anybody on here have a deal that they need help with? Anybody have a deal that they need help with, a question on, anything like that? A question about wholesaling. Anybody only have a question about wholesaling, subject to land contract, anything like that? I can ask you a question. Huh? So which website do you guys prefer when you look at properties? Okay, let me, let me, turn, you, let me turn you on this right real quick. So um, let me know if you guys can see this. Can you guys see this screen? It's blurry for me. It's blurry, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's still, yeah, it's still a little blurry. Uh, there, there it is. You see it? Okay. So here, here's a site called uh, HUDforeclosures.com, right? Um, I, you know, let me see. Is this the one here? Where they have all these different listings on, of, of HUD properties. So I don't know if you guys ever worked with HUD before, right? So HUD has it where you can actually put in offers on properties on a daily basis, and you can see if you won the bid. So this is all markets, right? So, and they already have an REO agent attached to it um, where you can actually give them a call. So let me see if I can pull this up here. Man, my, my sister normally does this, man, so bear with me. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Uh, let me see. So all the foreclosures in uh, the HUD, HUD properties that's on the market, well, it's not so on it though. Not so long. But, but yeah, this is the site here. So let me walk you guys through. I want to see you guys while I'm doing this. Let me take this off. So <clears throat> when you you go to HUDforeclosures.com, there's tons of properties on there that's up for foreclosures. And they already have REO, REO agents attached to it. So what you do, you go on there and you put in your zip code that you're looking to market in, right? So you got all these properties at your fingertip. They got pictures. They got lock boxes on it. Everything that you need. That's right there. So you can pull it up. My advice to you, if you're going to do this strategy, is get you a cash buyer already lined up. So pull up some cash buyers in one particular area and interview them. Hey, man, if I come, you know, what kind of property are you looking for? Or what's your buying criteria? <clears throat> he give you the buying criteria. He said, listen, if I get you a property in the next 30 days, are, are you ready to pull the trigger now? He said, yes. You say, okay, send me over a POF letter, a proof of funds letter, so me and my team can go to work for you. Not everybody, every, every investor is going to be willing to do that, right? But the ones that does, send you all the information, cool. It's, it serves two purposes. When you're working with this another real estate agent on a deal that you think he would buy, you can send that POF letter over to them. But in, And then once he sends you the POF letter, you see that this person is serious. So now you can invest your time in this, right? So now when I call the, uh, my um, uh, REO agent that's attached to HUD, and I tell him, say, listen, do you have an assistant? That, you, that work for you. But no, a lot of times when you're dealing with a person who does not have assistant as an REO agent and you put it in these offers on these properties that may be a lot less than what the, they're asking for them, eventually they're going to get tired of working with you because you're not even close to where they need to be. But if they got an assistant, they're more willing to work with you. right? They can push that down to their assistant. Now, once you win that offer, on, let's say you win that offer that, at the end of that night and they say, you know, congratulations, you won that offer. So what you need to make sure that you have before you start doing the strategy is get your MLS. I mean, get my MLS. I'm thinking about <laughs> MLS now. Get you a LLC setup of, of a property that you don't, uh, LLC setup that you don't mind selling because they don't want you wholesaling these properties. They want to sell them to individuals. So they set it out there for two weeks for individuals. After those two weeks, they open them up for investors. So what you want to do is set up your LLC that you don't mind selling. When you see a property that you want, of course, you want to you want to put your your company name on that on that contract. And then that buyer who wants to buy from you can sell your rights to that LLC. So when they pull that up, your name don't come off and his name go on your name. Your company name still stay on there. But the rights to the LLC change, you get your check. So and you can sit here at your di dining room table and put offers in all day long on properties. Just a little quick, quick tip, man. So now you asked the question, how do you get your leads? If I'm not mistaken. Uh, who, who said that? I'm sorry, man. Was it Lola? 
Is that what she said, Jason? I'm sorry, man. Well, I think she was asking about how you look up the properties now, as far as oh, I thought she said lease. I'm sorry. It, well, it, it, <laughs> okay. you know, it, it depends um, on what you're actually looking for. Okay. Um, so that, that's going to be based on a strategy that you decide that you're going to take um, on how you're going to look up leads or how you're going to uh, make those offers on your properties. Okay. Did, did we ask you a question? I'm not for sure who actually said it. Okay, so listen, my, my advice too, uh, let me see what he said. Thank you. You didn't mind knowing how you my deals. Okay, so here's here's the deal, man, too. When you first get in this business, you'll, you'll see a lot of people saying that they got smoking hot deals and they send it over to you, right? A lot of them other, other wholesalers, a lot of them just grabbing stuff off the internet, sending it to you and keep you busy all day long. My thing, and you have a lot of people want to sell you different leads or whatever the case is. When you're doing this business, a lot of us don't have any money to invest in stuff like that. So my thing would be do, the, do the, um, the stuff that don't cost you money first. Like Jason was talking about, do some driving for dollars, right? Take an hour, two hours on a Saturday morning when you ain't got nothing to do and drive your neighborhood. Look for properties that you know, need work done to them, who, who got all this mail, maybe the grass is not um, you know, up to par, whatever the case is, and uh, you know, skip trace these people who own these properties, send them, send them a quick letter, a bright yellow letter. Take a picture of what I do. I take a picture of the property and, and, and the state is in because a lot of these people who are absentee owners don't know the state of their property a lot of times. And if it's really looking bad, you take a picture of this property and you, you know, write a letter. Hey, I was in this neighborhood the other day. Want to, you know, want to know if you're interested in selling your property. Here's a picture of the property. And I'll also do a contract, but I just won't put the number in there. Give me a call back at this time if you're interested in selling and send it over to that person. I do the opposite. I put the number in there, Jay. You put, you put the number in there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, if you're able to, okay, so if you're able to go to that property and kind of look into that property and see if it need a whole lot of repairs. Mm -mm, I put an insulting number in there because I still want them <laughs> to call me. That's Jay. a good strategy. That's a good strategy. <clears throat> yeah. And then he may take it. You never know. So I got it. See, I learned something here today. But definitely do that. So and now what, what separates you from everybody else who's sending postcards you actually sent the picture. He was like, man, this dude got a picture of my house. He was in front of my home. He sent the contract too, right? You did, the person who's willing to go the furthest is the one that wins the deal. In my, my mind, if you willing to do a skip tracing on a person, it's hard to find that person. Those are the ones I go that extra mile for because I know a regular wholesaler is not going to do that. And I got to go find this guy because he got my money, right? That's how I look at things, so. Now, okay, so we talked a little bit about driving for dollars. Um, anything you want to add to that, Jason? I'm going to I'm I'm answer Lola because she said, when will they call you with an insulting number? Yeah, That's one or two ways. <laughs> one, they're calling to insult you because you sent them an insulting number, <laughs> or they're calling you because they want to negotiate that yeah. number. Um, and typically, when you, when you send them a number and they call you, now you have to, this is, this is part of your conversation and how you actually talk to a person. You call me and say, Hey, how, how would you, how dare you send me, you know, this offer for $15,000 for my property when I know it's worth more than that. And I'll say, well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to pretend like it's Lola. Lola, you know what? You're right. But my objective to be able to get you to call me back was to put something in there. Exactly. That's the key. You get them coming back and either cussing you out or giving, yeah. telling you, you got the contract. At least you, you got some feedback from the from your lead. Right? Yeah. That's that's huge, guys. That's huge. Um, it's a qu couple other things too. Um, I'm gonna give you guys a gym real quick, man. Um one thing that I do, <laughs> I contact um uh, management companies, property management companies. And here's why. I think property management companies are are a Jew. Because what happens is let's say I have 20 properties and I live in another state. And let's say my, me and my wife decided to sell all our real estate and go get some cryptocurrency, right? Go get some cryptocurrency. So what I'm gonna do is give this management company 60 day notice that I'm move my I'm selling my properties. So what I always tell people, and, and if, if your management company in your area don't know you by your name, you're not really doing your job because they have properties. So let's say that person called them on Monday morning and say, I'm giving you 60 day notice that I'll be selling these properties, and because they're gonna they're gonna lose that revenue that they're making. Right. 
So they like, oh man, we about to lose all this money or whatever the case is. So if they know me and I've been coming over there blowing up balloons when they're having parties and I'm out there shoving snow, whatever, cutting grass, whatever you need to do to go on their, their, great, their great side, they may call me up. Hey, Jay, I know you deal with investors, man. I got Mr. Johnson, he's getting ready to sell 20 of his properties. Do you know anybody you're interested in buying? So you may have 20, 20, 10, 20 properties that nobody knows about that you can outsource it out to your investors. But that don't happen if you don't put it into work and it don't cost you any money. Maybe go by there once a month, take some donuts and some, you know, take some donuts, tell them, here's my business card, man. I want to work with you guys. Any way I can help you guys, you let me know. Drop your business cards off. Have a nice day once a month. They're having some kind of party up there or whatever. They need you to blow some balloons. You go blow them balloons. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, again, don't cost you any money to do that. So think outside of the box to get these deals done. And it only take one deal that they send over to you that have four or five different properties in it. You off to the races. If you think about quitting your job after doing these type of deals, that will allow you to quit your job. All right. Any, any, any more questions? I probably have about 15, 20 things that I do outside, uh, outside the box that don't cost me any money. And then once you set them up, you don't have to continue to um, pay for that. You know what I'm saying? Now, we do have sources where you can get leads and stuff like that coming in. Um, I'm going to tell you a couple of different sites that you can use. Um, REI Pro has leads in it. You know, you look for cash buyers. That's our system. There. Yeah, they on there right now. You can get some upside down leads, um, absentee only leads, all that good stuff. Um, if you look for probate, um, you know, REI, you know, we just talked about the HUD foreclosure. If you look for, there's many ways to get many types of leads if you want to invest your money. Now, here's a great thing about REI Pro that I say. Um, you get up to 10,000 leads, if I'm not mistaken, and you get the access to their software. And then on their software, they have tons of videos on their software that you can learn step-by-step step on how to do some wholesaling. Your mentor is not going to tell you that. <laughs> so <laughs> that's game, guys. That's game. Any, any questions? Now, quick question, Jason. Is, is there any other software that you're using right now? Uh, yeah. Actually, um, so REI Pro is one of our main systems, but we also use um, Batch Leads. Yes. Yes, we use that too. We use Batch Leads. Um, I don't know. We got a lot of systems. Um, batch leads, batch dollar. Um, a lot of the, the the leads that we do, you know, they're cultivated um, based on the areas that we we work in. But those are the two main systems. Absolutely. So you know, go ahead and invest you, you know, invest into that, man. It it definitely be beneficial. Um, so what is that uh, batch lead like? A software or website? It's a it's a software. Um, we use it as an SMS platform, but you can also pull leads and and things from there as well. Yeah. No, I didn't understand. What do you do there? We pull we pull leads from it. Well, one of my other partners, um, he pulls leads uh, from it, but then we also use it as a an SMS. We send text. We send text out um, to uh, potential clients. So how do you get potential clients on that um, software or website? We we actually um, we do direct marketing, and so we'll pull a list of potential sellers. Let's say we're and we're looking for problems to solve. So if we if we pull a list, if we're here in Dallas, we might pull the water list. So all the houses that are have the water shut off that costs a little money to buy but we'll pull that list we also get the list of properties that have been on the uh, demolition list for the city then we'll stack that with pre-foreclosures and absentee owners and then we'll skip trace that list and we will text them or we'll cold call actually we text them and we cold call them to be honest with you nice good to know yeah yeah the property that has the most things wrong with it those are the people who really need you, <laughs> right? <laughs> so like you say, stack them. That's, that's definitely a great, great point to, to do that, man. For sure. For sure. All right. So is, are there any more questions out there? Yeah. You know, um, given the current market situation we're in right now, I mean, I know you mentioned that HUD, what, HUD for closure.com, is that what it was called? Correct. 
Um, that's where you, you look for properties. Um, but like, given, you know, how hot the market is currently, I mean, are there any foreclosure going in? I mean, a lot of people got equity in their property. Why would they go through that process of foreclosure and stuff to selling it? Well, I mean, that, that I, I definitely understand that. So we're looking for a person that's, that's in a situation. So let's say, you know, you got a property, you got some equity in your property, but it needs a whole lot of work done to it. Um, you haven't been making the, mo the monthly payments on it. You and your, let's say you and your spouse are sitting in there and we got that, that, that thing that they're going to take the property, right? That letter. Now, and nothing you can do. You can try to list it with, a, with an agent, but if you need a whole lot of work done to it, you really can't really do that, right? So you're in a situation. What do you do? You either let them people come and take your property or you sell it to an end buyer, get you some walking money and go live your life. And why couldn't, I mean, it makes sense, but if the property has a lot of work that needs to be done, why couldn't the real estate agent list it? Still well, end up as is condition? But, well, I tell you what, when you get a chance, <clears throat> well, okay, so m most of the time, when you're dealing with a realtor, man, they want a house that's in a great, great situation. Not totally, let's say you have a property that need a whole lot of work done to it. I, I'm, I'm not having met a realtor who will take on stuff like that. Have you, uh, Jason? I, I can't hear you. I'm, I meet I meet them all the time. Um, yes. It's just that I end up buying from them. Um, okay. And no. what what we normally do is, if you go to an area where you know that you're targeting in a property, most of those realtors will be working those areas. Okay, um, so if you find a house that needs work done to it and you see that there's a for sale sign in it, I can guarantee you that's what they list and they don't mind listing it, but their clientele typically uh, are investors that they sell to. Yeah. That's true. And so you can, you can find them now. It's not a whole lot of them. Don't get me wrong. There is not a whole lot of them. A majority of them want to get the, the highest and top dollar for the property that they're selling. So they want it to be in move in or excellent condition before they sell it. The other part of that is, is that when you're a realtor, they also know that banks, the mortgage companies who are writing the mortgages are not going to lend on the property on an asset that needs substantial amount of work. So it's not going to qualify. And, and, and too, a lot of time when you do list it with a realtor, if they're not really a high octane realtor, right, that's going to get out there and get, get a buyer in that situation, it may sit on the market for a few months. You don't have that time. You need a person who's going to get it now. You know what I'm saying? So you can move on with your life. Yeah, that makes sense. So, I mean, for, for us newbies here who, I mean, there's a lot of like... Um, you know, jargons, words like skip trace and so far. <laughs> I, I just figure out what it is, but there's a couple of other ones that y'all yeah, throw out, out there um, that I have no idea what it is. But I mean, wholesaling, right? I mean, I know that's how y'all start. What you have, you guys are into that kind of stuff, right? So, I mean, how does that normally work just for the newbies? <laughs> I mean, how, how does wholesaling work? Yeah, how does it normally work? So you buy houses from, I know you kind of explain a little bit. So you buy houses from either realtor or, you know, you skip trace, find people who abandon their houses. But like once you get the house, right? Like how does the process normally work from step to step? I'm trying to get like a visual idea of like how it normally works, basically. You want me to, you want me to take that, Jay? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. okay. So here, here's, here's wholesaling in a nutshell. You find a property, okay, and you put a property under contract, okay? Your intention is to close on that property if you're going to take it down, fix and flip it or not. Wholesaling is where you've gotten it at a wholesale price and you're going to sell your interest in that contract to a person like me or Jay or another buyer who wants to fix that property up and then put it back on the market so that now a realtor can list it and a bank can actually um, fund it on a conventional or FHA uh, loan for someone to live in. Yeah. And, and so when, when you talk about a wholesale, you know, to get it at a wholesale price. So let's say that property is worth a hundred thousand, right? Um, and so as a wholesaler, you want to get it at about 
70% of what the ARV or the after repair value is. So let's say the property is after the house is all the way fixed up, the property is worth a hundred thousand. So let's say um, it's ten thousand repairs, right? Well, let's say that do the seventy percent rule. So seventy percent of a hundred thousand is seventy thousand, right? Let's say it's five thousand for repairs. That's sixty five thousand. Let's say you want to make five thousand a deal. That's sixty thousand. So the max you can offer on that deal is sixty thousand dollars. Makes sense. Makes yeah. sense. For so it's, it's a formula though. So and we, we, I got a lot of um, PowerPoint presentations that's on, on that topic that we will be doing that as well to kind of give you a visual. It's hard to kind of be us kind of explain it to you uh, verbally without you actually physically seeing it. You know what I'm saying? So it'd be a little easy. And you go on YouTube, pull it up the 70% rule. And there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube as well. That'll break that down for you. Okay. All right. Great question. And you're going to hear some terms and <laughs> we've been doing it for so long so i apologize if we say some stuff you don't understand but you do just what you just did hey man what does this mean i have no problem explaining it so great. Right. appreciate you right, no any problem. more questions man y'all making it easy man so so let's um anything you want to add real quick jason um nothing to, to actual add what i would say is is that as of now, if this is something that you're going to want to do, and this is something that you're truly going to be passionate about, you want to make sure that every day that you're learning something new about this business, it, yeah. every day. Um, and that way you're, you're continuing to grow. And that's what we're here for. It doesn't matter what you ask. And don't think if it's a, it's a stupid question. Okay. Now, People will say, you know, there's no such thing as stupid questions. Yes, there are. Okay, I'm going to be really honest with you. There are <laughs> certain such things as stupid questions, but it's, it's not stupid if it's something that you don't understand. And yeah. that's what I want you to understand and know that that's what we're here for. You ask those questions, we'll give it to you. If you think of something, then I'll tell you. If it's wrong, I will tell you that it's wrong. And then I will give you what I believe that your thought process is so that you can understand where you were going wrong. That's what we want to be here for. Yeah. Absolutely. So any questions? So let's do this then. Let's do this. Let me know if you guys can see my screen here. <clears throat> well, let me see if I can blow this thing up, man. 30 day real estate wholesaling challenge. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm a personally, well, we're going to personally challenge you guys today, right? All right. So it's some things that you can do. Um, yourself you know starting the day man to get you to this get you to a deal that really don't cost you any money when i first started i didn't have a dime man i, I had no money put towards nothing so so when i when i talk to people about wholesaling i'm i'm talking to you in a way where you don't have to spend any money right so let, let's let's check this out real quick so now this is an old uh powerpoint presentation so it may be some stuff it may be outdated and i will go through it <laughs> you know what I'm saying to make sure you guys don't take that no more but the stuff that you guys can take, get it and run with it. Try to apply it. So I hope you guys got a pen and a piece of paper. All right. 50 re uh, uh, rental cold calls a day, right? Now, listen, Zillow has a for rent side too. So most people only think that Zillow has uh, for sale side, but they have a rental side too. And what I've learned lately, there's a lot of real estate agents on there now. Right. You know, so if you run, if you come across one that has, you know, an actual landlord on there, whatever the case is, or somebody who's actually uh, renting their property, whatever, cold call them. Try to get you about 50 out of there, you know, a day is possible. Right. 25, 50, make those calls. When your lunch break, instead of being on Facebook, make those calls. Here's another thing, too, real quick. <clears throat> if you look at, if you go to tomorrow and get you a Sunday's paper, and you go to the housing section or the rental section or whatever the case is. A lot of people who are older people, when they get ready to rent their properties, they don't use social media. They don't use a different platform. They put a sign in front of it or whatever the case is. And they still may be posting on these um, um, newspapers, right? I know it sounds crazy, but they may be posting these houses are for rent. Well, what I do, you know, and they have their number on there and they actually have um, that sometimes uh, three bedroom, two bath or whatever it is. So what I do, I have my sister give them a call. Hey, I see you got a property on 123 Main Street. I see you got it for rental, like a nice property. Want to know, are you interested in selling? 
Because sometimes they may be written, but because they can't sell it. Right? So this is a way to get that done, man. Uh, you can, and you can talk directly with the seller. And if, if he's still trying to rent it, it's obvious he may be an investor. So you can say, okay, well, you're not interested in selling it. Well, if I can find you another property in this area, would you be willing to buy it? So you have an opportunity to get you a buyer or get you a deal or both, right? It don't cost you any money to do that. <clears throat> um, postcards. So we talked you know, talked about postcards. So, well, I don't, I don't really do postcards anymore. As we talked about earlier, I go to um, the, what is it called? The, the 99 cent store. And I give me some envelopes and I give me a bright yellow paper. And I hand write on all of them. Hey man, my name is Jay Wicker. I'm a local investor. I see you have a you know, property on 123 Main Street. Want to know if you're interested in selling it. You are, give me a call and give me a specific time to give you a call. Right. If you know the property, if you've been by the property, go ahead and take a picture of the property, send a picture of the property with it, with a contract. As Jason said, put a number in there. Make that person give you a call. Right. You can do that. A little bit of nothing. News, you know, an envelope is pretty cheap. The paper's cheaper. Right. You can definitely do that. It'll cost you a lot of money. Um, add yourself to five wholesaling Facebook groups a week. Go ahead and do it. You, a lot of times what you're going to do, you're going to find people that's on there who are going to be saying that they have deals. They may not have cash buyers. Maybe you can do some JVing with them or whatever the case is. Let people know what you're doing. If, you're, if your best friend don't know you're in real estate, are you really in real estate? You got to get out there, guys. People need to know that you are in real estate. So po post I buy houses on social media 21 times a week, right, on your account. Now, there's a there's a a, um, a group not a group but there's a um, you ever heard of Pinterest before a social media thing called Pinterest where you can put in all your social media accounts and you can send one post and it goes to all your different social media accounts at one time right think about all the friends that you have on that page that's in different states let's say you were the virtual wholesaler you're reaching all these people at one time. I'm a wholesaler. If you guys see a deal out there or a property that's abandoned or whatever the case is, give me a call. If I buy it, I'll give you 500 to 1,000 per deal that I close. Really inexpensive, guys. Don't cost you a dime. Just a little effort to get it set up. You know, we talked about this a little earlier with Jason that's driving for a dollar, you know, for a couple hours a week. You know, like Jason was talking about, instead of going direct, uh, straight to work this way, maybe take a little detour, look at some properties, and going on to work. On your way coming back, take another route, do it, do it again. Okay, right, right? You never know the deal that you may run across. Don't cost you any money. <clears throat> Don't forget about virtual driving for dollars as well. Yes, sir. With yes, Google sir. Maps. Yep. All right. Contact five pre foreclosures a week. So <clears throat> if you if you're in Texas, you're in Dallas, you can pull up, you know, the, the, the foreclosure list online. The list is actually free unless they change it recently. You can go up there and you can see houses that's about to be foreclosed on in the next 90 days. So what I do in that situation, um, if, it's, if it's one close to my neighborhood or where I'm at, where I'm going to be at, I'm going to knock at these doors. See, I'm willing to go that extra mile that most people are not willing to do. And now here's, here's the deal, too, in, in this situation. If you're going to be doing that, drive for dollars or doing, the, doing what I'm talking about doing here, I would say spend about $90 to get you some signs on the side of your car. I buy house or whatever the case is because you don't want to be driving up and down these streets and looking crazy and get the police called on you, right? You need these people to know what you're doing. And when I'm, when I'm out, uh, if I see a, 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 per, a homeowner out there cutting his grass, I let them know, hey, man, I'm, a, I'm an investor I'm looking to buy a property. Do you know any properties in this area that may be up for sale or empty or whatever the case is? And if they tell me, I'll give you 500 to 1000 if I close the deal, right? Same thing with pre foreclosure You want to go buy there if you can, Talk to the owner if you can. You know, uh, what happens in, in this situation, one, one of the deals that I did is that when knocked on the door and, and, and basically was like, hey, man, um, are you the owner? No, I'm not the owner. I'm renting this property. Well, I didn't know if you knew or not, man. This property is up for foreclosure. Man, I just paid the rent. You know, and he didn't tell me nothing about that. But listen, I'm an investor and we're looking to buy properties in this area. So I may have a person that's willing to buy this property and keep you here as a tenant. Can you give me the owner's information? Let me get his number from you. Now he he, he you know he gave me the owner's uh, information. I called the owner, said, "Hey, listen, local investor. I talked to your tenant over there, such and such. Good good dude. Hey, mama, know are you interested in selling this property? Yes, man. Uh, you know he might he probably won't tell me it's up for foreclosure, but I know it is. So now I'm going in, 
right? You got to go that extra mile to get these deals done. I know I'm talking a little fast. I'm trying to get you guys out here, you know, great time too, man. All right. Text 25 people you know personally and let them know that you buy houses cash and ask them if they know anyone that needs to sell, give, it, give them the send them, give them 500 to 1,000 per deal. So listen, everybody right now on this call probably have 500 to 1,000 people on their, on their cell phone right now. It takes one text blast to let people know what you're doing. You got to do it. Here's a gem right here for you guys. I say call, uh, uh, call realtors that, and ask them for expired listings. Listen, I don't care how great of a realtor you, you are, you got some listings that you weren't able to get done for whatever reason, right? All of them do. So, so let's say they, you know, they, they try to get a property under, con uh, got a property under contract, but the seller wanted more than the property's really worth, right? The realtor already knew that this, this price, this property is priced too high. But of course, he's going to sign a contract and hope that they get it done, right? So you say, listen, you can pull up top real estate agents in whatever market that you're looking to market in and say, listen, do you, what do you do with your expired listings? Send them over to me. If I'm able to close it, I'll, I'll send you $1,000, $2,000 per deal that I close. It only takes you one deal to close that, you know, from that realtor for them to start sending you everything because this was a dead deal and they work on commission. Right. And then what happens come Monday morning when they have that morning, Monday morning meeting, they see tell all the realtors in their office. Hey, if you got any spot, listen, send them over to Jay. So imagine if you do that to 20 brokerages. That's better you do the 25 or 30. You got deals constantly coming in. Just, you know, just put it together, set it up, take a little effort to set it up. But you can definitely do it. All right. Spire listings, guys. And, 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 and why these are why you can actually do these type of deals is this. We do creative financing. So even if the property is upside down, that person is willing to take terms on that deal. We still can do it. Right. So we will, we can pay you a little bit more than the property is actually worth if we're doing a uh, maybe a subject to or a land contract or whatever the case is, stuff that um, agents don't know anything about for the most part, all right? Uh, we talked about this a little bit, you know, contact, uh, you know, fellow wholesalers, ask them if they have any properties they are trying to sell, you know, and see if they want to do a JV on the deal. So what is a JV? It's, it's meaning it's a joint venture deal. So maybe you have a wholesaler who has a property already on the contract, but for some reason he cannot find a buyer. So we talked about REI Pro got cash buyers on there, right? Um, it's, it's a lot of ways to find cash buyers, man. One of the, one of the great ways that I find cash buyers in Dallas, down in Dallas, you go downtown to the count, the quarter our house, and everybody down there that's looking to buy properties, I think it's, I don't know if it's like the second Tuesday of the month or whatever the case is, all those people out there are cash buyers. Go get all their phone numbers. So if I, anybody call me from another, another city or whatever the case is, another state, and they, and they got a property over here in Dallas, I got tons of buyers ready to buy, right? And if I don't, other wholesalers does. So, and so what happens is you can negotiate something to where you can split the assignment fee 50 50 or 60 40 or 70 30, whatever you decide to negotiate. So now he got the property, you got the buyer, y'all bring it together and y'all split the assignment fee. Everybody wins. There's tons of groups out there that you can get on. All right. So here's a great thing here too. Uh, reach out to Bird Dogs on Facebook. Let them know um, that you will, you know, you will sign a fee 50-50 with them, right? So this is, this is one, of the, one of the things that I do a lot, right? <clears throat> Think about this for a second. Who knows your neighborhood better than, than you? When you say a mailman does, a mailman is everywhere, all the nooks and crannies of the area that you want to market in every single day. When somebody get put out, he knows about it. When somebody moved out, he knows about it. When the house is not kept up right, he knows about it. So the next time you see a mailman, when it's on a hot day, go get him a bottle of water and say, man, I know you must be tired. But listen, I'm an investor. When you out on your route, here's my number. If you see a property that may be abandoned, that may be some work done to it, give me a call. And if I purchase it, I'll give you half of my assignment fee. So if I make 10 grand, I'm going to give you five, uh, five, uh, 50,000, uh, I'm sorry, 50,000, 5,000, and I'll take 5,000. And I'll put you on a contract. So you're my bird dog now, right? So when you, once you close one of those deals, that person is going to tell you about everything. 
he's not only gonna tell you, tell uh, tell you about everything. He also know other other mailmans in different zip codes in this area too. So you possibly can have the whole Dallas locked up. And people sending you deals constantly. It's a man. I, I usually don't give that out. <laughs> I'm just keeping honest with you. But this is the way you get deals coming to you without spending a whole lot of money doing it, guys. Right? Go ahead, join the Facebook groups. See who on there that's most active. DM them and say, listen, man, I see that you, you know, you, you got constant, you got properties, whatever the case is. I want to work with you. I don't want to give you 500 to 1,000 per deal. I want to give you 50% of the purse. And I'm going to put you on the contract. Close one deal with that guy. Guess what? The other guy he was working with, he no longer works with that guy. Because now you're giving him $5,000, whether you're giving $500. So that just a little gem here, man. So what do you guys think about that? So you don't have to, have to be good to start. You just have to start to be good, guys. A little corny, but you get the picture. <laughs> All right. Any questions? You guys think you guys can use that? It don't cost you no money. Now put them to sleep. <laughs> but listen, man. Um, first of all, man, again, thank you guys for, for coming on, man. You, you guys could be anywhere that you wanted to be, but you came on with me and Jason, right? Listen to some of the stories, man. Understand that you will get value from, from, from this, from this uh, REI meeting. Uh, you will get value. Let me ask you something. Huh? You have said, like, um, you should contact five pre, pre foreclosures a week. Yeah. And then you said the list is free. So where do you get this kind of list? Uh, go to the, the county, I think the county tax assessor's office, if I'm not mistaken. Um, my sister does it all the time. I haven't actually physically did it in a while. But if you go to, I think it's the county tax assessor's office and put in pre-foreclosure, it's the list of them there. It's like a and, website you pull it from? Yes, I'm, I'm going to put it in the chat for you. Okay. Yeah. So, now, if you're in a different state, some states charge you for it, but uh, Dallas doesn't. What I'll throw did, it in the chat Dallas. here. All right. Because it's Dallas County. Dallas County. Dot org. Okay. And also that um, batch leads. How do you join that um, group? Okay. Say it one more time. The batch leads group for texting or SMS, you said. Um, he, he posted in the chat. There's a, I think he posted a link. Yeah, I put the link in there. It's a link that's in the chat. Actually, I put the website in there, but it's bachelorleads.com. Bachelorleads.com. Okay. Um, I, I know I do batch skip, uh, is it batch skip trace, um, uh, where you can, you know, you can skip trace piece people with that as well. Um, find some good people. They're, they're pretty solid, but it's really inexpensive. But what, one more thing too. So if you're looking to do some skip tracing, um, let's say you got one or two people that you're trying to find. I think that one of the greatest things that um, that you can do is post them maybe in Facebook and put that city. You, you might get five or six people with that same name. Just DM all five of them, and you might get four of them cuss you out. But that last one may say, "Yeah, I do have a property on one two three Main Street," so it don't cost you any money. So that's on the skip tracing side. All right. Any questions? I think we should walk through a deal um, here pretty soon too, uh, Jay. Okay, go, go ahead and jump it off, brother. Well, I mean, I don't. Let me see. You know, put me out there. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, that's all right. Let me. See. I think I share my screen. Hold on. Okay. Just to just to kind of give you an idea. I mean, we're talking about systems, and we're talking about you know. Um, let's see. It's going to stop your screen share. Let me pull this up. I think you can see my screen. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. So we were talking about what REI Pro. Just to kind of give you an idea of what he's saying. So these are actual. These are some of the locations that we actually work in. Um, but you have the opportunity to be able to pull these leads out of that system. So now, now keep in mind, guys. So this is this is REI Pro software. 
Yeah. We're, not, we're not getting any money to promote them at all. We just yeah, we're not. That's game. Yeah, That's we're, not. We're, yeah. we're not. We're not. I, yeah. I'm not doing the affiliate. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're crash. not doing none of that. So. But um, <laughs> right. this is where you can actually come in and you can actually pull your leads. But this is what houses all of my properties. I'll clear that out. All of the properties that we're either after or that we've actually closed or um, where we have as a holding. Okay. So all of that information is in there. I think what what was the deal I was talking about earlier? Um, we made 40000 Talked about two of them, didn't I? Okay, the, w- one of them was um, the ninety thousand. Yeah, I think that's this one. I think it's Garland. No, this was um, so this one. It's an ugly. That's an ugly beast right there. Okay, this is the this is the one that we made ninety something thousand off of. This one right here. Um, I think it should be down here. Yeah, there's the check. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's a copy of the check right there. So you see, it's real, guys. It's real in the field. <laughs> yeah, that's a copy of the check. But uh, yeah, this one is a it's a long, 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 long thrown out um, deal on the way we work this deal. Um, what's a better one? I think Carpenter would be better. Yeah, Carpenter is a better one now. So I'll give you an, I'll, I'll let you know. So how we found this, this house, I think this one actually came from, um, this is a driving for dollars lead. So this is from driving around neighborhood. Um, one of the mentees that I was um, mentoring at the time, uh, he would drive around and find those and then I would walk him through those deals. Um, and so this one, if you go all the way back when we started this, So we contacted her, sent her a letter, postcard. I think it took us about six months before she called us back. That started in January, six months before she called us back. Okay. This one is another one we got for free too, Jay. Um, but I offered her some, some money. Um, but we got this one. She owed taxes on it. I think we picked this one up for... Yeah, we, we made a $15,000 offer on it, but she owed like 11000 in taxes. Um, here's what happened with this one. The bank didn't foreclose on it. They were supposed to foreclose on the property, but they didn't. They did it as a charge off as if it was some kind of credit card or something to that effect. She didn't even know that she still owned the property. That's why she wasn't calling us back for six months. Wow. OK, so <laughs> finally, when she called us back, we were able to put that one uh, on the contract and then we had to get the bank to release the lien on that thing. OK, so we put in a request to get that lien released. So it was about 10 to 15 days. We finally got it done. The title company took care of it for us and we closed it. Uh, how much was this one? I don't know if there's a check in this one or not. Let's see. No. Yeah, it took us a while to, to, to get this one done because of the bank's issue. Yeah, so I only gave her 1500 bucks for that house. Sent her a cashier's check for $1,500. Um, yeah, and we, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we did a, what did we make on this property? We made $33,000 on that one. Yeah, no fixing it up, no nothing. Okay, we didn't do anything to that property. Wow. We just we just sold the paper. Um, it looks, <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty nice now, too. Um, and what's that other one? The $43,000, that's Happy Trail. It was a newer bill, too. It was a pre-foreclosure. And that's how we picked this one up. We did a subject two on it. Um, let's 
Let's see. Here, here's a copy of the wire deposit just to let's see if it'll come up. That's the wire deposit right there. So it was 4310854. Some people don't make that in a year, man. Yeah. How, how long it took you to do that deal? This one took, well, let's look at it. Didn't take long. So we met with her on February the 2nd and so we showed it, showed it, showed it. So we closed, oh, we, we did it in about 30 days. 30 days. Yeah, about 30 days. Um, so, yeah. So 30 days, guys. 40 grand, 30 days. So I want you to, to pay attention to this one right here. Okay. Remember, this house is in foreclosure. I was able to get the bank to put this house to take it off of the foreclosure list. Okay. Put on hold so we can close that deal. And again, that was a that was a pretty good one. She gave me this house for free. Okay. Um, there's a special <laughs> warranty. Special warranty deed. Um, so here's where she signed it over to my company. And look, this is a deed of gift. I didn't give any money. I didn't do anything. Okay. She <laughs> gifted this house to me because uh, she no longer wanted it anymore. Man. Come on, guys. Well, how, would, Come on. how would somebody do that? Why? Why? Because yeah. they're in a situation that we want to solve their problem. Um, Absolutely. This situation was um, in the middle of a divorce. Okay. Okay. Um, she owned the house before they got married. So she still had complete ownership of the property. He moved out. Uh, she had bad memories in the house, so she didn't want it. Um, she stopped paying the note on it because she was just going to let it go back to the bank. Okay. So, um, and this came as a, um, a referral to me. So all, all wholesalers are, we are problem solvers. Whatever mm -hmm. the issue is, solve their problems, you, you, you get the property. Yep. Normally, that's how that works. So that's why we want to get that owner on the phone, have a conversation, see what the issue is. Okay. If you're able to solve that issue, you, you're more likely to get that deal. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it, that's that's really all it comes down to. If you can actually find a way to, this is one that we close in Georgia. If you can actually find a way to solve whatever these problems, whatever these issues are that they're actually having, you can earn money on that. So we did this and this was in Georgia. And I'll tell you, we earned, I earned more money off of this deal than the seller did. I earned more money off of this deal than the, than the seller actually did. Um, where's the settlement? So basically you find a seller and you make a deed with them and then you put it on the market. I don't put it on, we don't put it on the market. Um, I mean, realtors can actually do that, right? So you will have either have buyers that are already set up that's going to purchase these properties from you or you can find a buyer who's going to purchase it from you because they're going to be paying cash for it. So where do you find these buyers? Um, anywhere. Yeah, uh, listen, this, this, this is what I always tell people. Um, finding a buyer is the easy part. It is. If you got a great deal, the buyer will find you. I don't, hey, I'm, I, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> if you have a great deal, they'll, follow, they'll find you. Yeah. I, I tell, my, tell my guys that's working, that's working with me, if, listen, if you got a good deal and nobody's buying it, chances are you need to go back to renegotiate. You know what? I'll show you a trick real quick and, and tell you how easy it is to find a buyer. So if you look at my screen, I'm just going to go to Facebook real quick, okay? And let's go to groups. And let's just go over to 
um, where is it? Let's go to DFW. So, cause we're, we're, most of us are in Dallas, right? So if we go to this group and let's say that you have a deal that's in seven, five, two, four, one. Okay. Now, you know, Neil, right? Neil, Neil's yeah. got his deal posted. So Absolutely. Neil, Neil posts this deal in here, right? So he's looking for it. But if you go to the comments, there's your buyers. Yep. Yep. There's your buyers right there. They're putting their email address in there and boom, all you have to do, you can grab those email addresses or you can tag on this and say, Hey, I saw that you were interested in this other property that was in 75241. I've got another one in there, almost the same like as this one that uh, you commented on back in, in March. I wanted to see if you still had an interest in, in that area. Yeah. That's how simple it is. And this was a, this was the old strategy I used to use as well. If you go on, I don't know if it's like that still now, but it don't cost you any money, right? You can go on Zillow and, and, and pull in the zip code that you want to be in and look at the houses that are brand new, fi well, fixed up, completely fixed up. The person who, who did that is an investor. Mm -hmm. They number you normally is right there. You give them a call. Hey, I see you got one on 123 Main Street. I got one right around the corner. Maybe, you know, see if you're interested in doing that. Or just like Jason about to do it, go on REI Pro. Yeah, you go on REI Pro, and again, we could do the same exact thing. So 75241, I'll put in that zip code, and then it's going to ask me what I'm looking for. So in this case, I am looking for investors, my potential buyers. So for that zip code, there's 1,451 potential um, buyers that are in that zip code for us. And it's going to pull up all the information as far as those houses. Okay. This has got new information, but the tax info is who's telling you. So Serrano Properties bought this house. It's probably on the market right now, but they bought that house. There's their address. I could do a quick look up on their address, call Serrano Properties and see if they're interested in another property in that area. Yep. It's just literally that easy. Yeah. The hard part is finding sellers. The hard part is in negotiating to, to get the sellers. But if you're consistently doing it. Yeah. If you're consistently doing it, you will find them. I guarantee you, you'll find them. Yep. Okay. And when you have an automated system that are actually sending you deals, um, and Jay, are you doing PPC? No. Okay. So um, when you're doing PPC on, let me see if I can share my um, computer, I mean, my phone screen on, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I do classes and stuff. So yeah. I got yeah, all kinds of crap. <laughs> He's a, he's a tech guy. That's my, that's my guy right there. So when, um, when you are, yeah, it should pop up in a minute. When you are actually, uh, did it pop up? Uh, something just popped up a moment ago. Yeah, there's my screen. Can you see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you have consistent deals, that 145, most of those are actually what we call PPC, which is pay-per-click deals. Um, and you'll see, because we're countrywide, it'll say, hey, you got a new lead from New Jersey, you got a new lead from North Carolina, new lead from Illinois, new lead from uh, Florida. So I'll go in there and I will find these leads or the ones that I want based on my buyers, uh, Pennsylvania, and figure out, hey, if we're going to do this deal or not. But these are customers who are actually raised their hand and said, Hey, I want to sell my property. Yeah. Now they're not cheap. Okay. The, the, those cost money for sure. But that's another way to, to find them. Um, and I guess since we're in here, I can show you batch real quick too. Right. What part of batch are you using Jay? Say it again. What part of batch are you using? Just no, the... I, I, I was, I was, I'm, I'm using the basket tracing service. I'm, I'm okay. not actually using the batch. <laughs> All right, so here's our batch um, platform as well. So like, like Jay say, I'm, I'm your tech guy. When it comes to tech and, and, and doing things like that, I'm that guy. So this is our batch system. This is where we house, or this, you can say it's our filing cabinet for all of our properties that we're after. And um, when we go inside of there, then we got phone numbers. We'll text them and, and do all of that stuff inside of this system. And it tells me what's going on with those properties. So if I say, hey, look, I just want to hit liens today. I can hit 6,925 liens if I want to. But it depends on where they're located at, too. So 
right now, I think we're, I think we're currently working. Um, yeah, we're working in North Carolina right now. So inside of here, we'll send these texts and we'll do these leads inside of, um, inside of batch. And that's how we find our leads. So it's, so it's many ways to do it. Yep. Many ways and then we cold call too. So we cold call, we text, we send out a few postcards and, and letters and contracts here and there um, just to keep the attention going. And then my team um, will do um, follow-up calls um, inside of this system for all of these properties that we already have. That means that they've raised their hand at least once and said, hey, I want to sell this property. So we continue to call them, follow up and send them letters uh, and postcards and contracts. Yeah. Well, one, one, one quick side note, on REI Pro, you can actually pull comps on properties, put together offers on properties, all that good stuff from right from that. So if you got a property, let's say in Oklahoma, if you got a property in Michigan or whatever, you can pull comps from that site. Yeah, so you want to find out the offer. value. Yeah, you want to find out your value inside of here. You just go right here, pull up the comparable sales. And um, you'll be able to see what those sales are in that area to determine how you're going to offer that. So we've got, what, after repair, right, 87? What do you say, the offers, right? Yeah. So once that's done, you can come over to, oh, this also allows you to skip trace inside of here if you need to yeah. as well. Yep. yep. Okay. Right. Um, but when we're getting ready to make an offer, that number comes over here and then we can start breaking down the repair expenses and, and all of those things to determine what that offer is going to actually be. Yeah. So that's and, the max offer. It's, it's a little video too at the, at the top there that kind of, if you don't know exactly what you're doing, you hit that little, the TV there and right. they'll walk you through that. Yeah. Exactly. how to put that on there. So good information guys. Okay. So say we got some um, property that we want to put it on a deed. So who comes up with the initial cash or initial amount before the buyer steps in? So you well, that depends. One, that that contract, actually depends, said, yeah. Say it one more time. You said, you said the contract or you said a deed? So the wholesalers, we make a deed with the sellers. Okay. So who puts in the initial amount for the deed? Like say they say, okay, I want to let go of this property for say 125,000 it's a big property and maybe they want to sell it for that amount with the say they have tax and everything and they're going to let go with this amount so who comes up with this amount before the buyer steps in okay hopefully i understand what you're saying so when you're talking to a seller and you want to put it on the contract and and they want and they want um earnest money is what you're saying right yes Okay, so in that situation, nine times out of 10, well, I, I have to change it now. Um, now I'm putting down some money, um, about $10 on, on mine, right? And usually I was putting nothing down and, and letting my end buyer actually go ahead and do that. You can, you can do it two ways. You can put the money down or you can have your end buyer do it. The way that we do it is that um, I'm not trying to put any of my money in jeopardy because remember, um, you know, you can have your, you can actually get your money taken put down the earnest money, right? Um, if, if you don't close the deal. So what I do, I let my end buyer take care of it. So once the deal is actually at the title company and it's clear to close, right? And we're ready to go. Then the money for my end buyer, it becomes hard that he can't take that money away. So the max amount of money that I put down on my deal is $10 on the deal. I negotiate that. Now, if I'm dealing with a realtor and I know I have a buyer for this area, and I know it's a solid deal. And I know all this, this, and this, and it all looks good. I'm willing to put some money down because I know I'm going to get it done. So it may go up maybe 500 if I need to. But that's, that's, a, that's not every situation. I'm not trying to put none of my money in jeopardy. Yeah, I just pulled, I just pulled one uh, purchase and sell agreement up uh, out of Georgia. You see it's $10 on there for earnest money. <laughs> so I, and I just I just changed I that know. because I talked to a guy the other day. I was trying to maybe put a dollar down. He's like, no, nah, it got at least be ten dollars, man. So yeah. so, so yeah, make ten dollars. Really so ten dollars, you're good to go. So what does that mean, ten dollars? Like, what are you trying to say there? Well, the ten dollars when they say earnest money, 
you have to show some kind of consideration to have a binding contract. Right. Um, and now consideration can be considered by some as no money at all. You could put zero there. Consideration could be, hey, here's a pat on the back. I'm gonna give you $21,590 in the next 30 days. But um, most title companies want to have a dollar amount there so that they can open up what's called escrow. Uh, so they have to open up an escrow account so money can flow through their title company and then be dispersed to all the people that are involved in, I want to say loss, I'm thinking about claims, but real estate, so they can, all the parties that are involved in the transaction. And again, I'm just now doing that myself. You know, I was still in that mindset, man, I'm not putting nothing down, you know, but mm -hmm. listen, Ten dollars is really nothing, you know. Put that money down yeah. to, to make sure that contract is right, and uh, you often run. If you lose ten dollars and that kill you, you shouldn't be in real estate, <laughs> you know. You're basically so, making a contract that I will sell your property for such and such amount, and well, they know the amount that we're gonna sell it to, and they're still gonna settle for a smaller amount. Well, we, we we're 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 not selling the property. We're selling the rights to that contract. So we're not to actually we don't own the property. We own the rights to the contract. So when you so negotiate my, with a seller, how do you ask them for that? So I, I let them know. Say, listen, what do you want for your property? We negotiate that property based on the condition of the property. Once we agree on the terms, on our contract, it says that we have the right to assign it. We have the right to purchase this property ourselves or send it to one of our uh, end buyers or whatever the case is, or investor partners or whatever the case is to do the deal. Only thing that that person really needs to know is that the, the, the number that we negotiated, you will walk away with this at the title company minus the taxes. That's it. So it's like if, if I owed you money, <laughs> right, and I get somebody else to pay it, do you really matter in that situation? That's it. So if you and if I make over a certain amount of money, say you make over 10 grand, I usually do a double close. So that way, if I'm making 20, 30, 40,000 at the title company, the owner don't say, no, where this money is going through and possibly destroy your deal. But if I'm making 10 grand or under, I go ahead and do just a wholesale deal and cash out. So the seller knows that my property is going to be sold for 150, but I'm getting 125 and he's going to agree to that? Yeah, you, yeah, absolutely. I've told people, I've done deals where I've told them exactly what I'm doing. So listen, I'm not going to purchase your property, but I knew, do know other people who, who are going to purchase your property. Only thing you need to, uh, and I don't say, okay, I'm going to make a hundred grand on your property. No, I've let them know, so listen, this is what you want. I'm going to get you what you want for your property. Because of the condition that is in and the condition or the situation that that person is in, they just need their money now, what we, we agreed upon. Okay. Now, if a person see I'm making 20 grand on the back end and, and they destroy their deal, they're in a situation, they need this money now. So now it's going to be prolonged if you ever get it sold. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you've been greedy in that situation, because I put in work, I found the buyer, I tied this thing together, I got the title company, everything ready to go, and today you're going to get a paid $70,000 right now. You mean to tell me you're going to walk away from the $70,000 because I'm making ten or 20000 on the deal when you really need the money? Because we're dealing with people who need to sell their property, not just thinking, oh, well, let me see how much can I get for the property. We look for a person that's in a situation. Okay. Right? Like, if, let's say if you had a car for sale for $1,000, right? And let's say some, somebody, and you need to pay your rent, which is $800. And somebody comes in and say, listen, man, I'll give you, 70, 70, uh, you know, 70, $700 for this property. You have to make a decision in that situation. Should I, should I try to come up with the whole eight by myself and not sell my car? Or should I try to come up with a hundred, uh, another hundred dollars to pay my rent? You're going to probably go ahead and sell that car for 700 and try to find the other eight or have the landlord work with you to keep you in that place. That's okay. basically it. Okay. All right. Hey, great questions. I'm telling you, <laughs> great questions. <laughs> so uh, any more questions? So again, so we, we're going to be talking about um, commercial deals as well, land and all that good stuff, man. So definitely stay tuned. Uh, anything you want to touch on with that, Jason? Not at the not at the moment, man. I mean, we've we've kind of touched on most of the basics. I think that now it's time to start putting some action to um, what we've been discussing. Um, and again, inside of the group, post your questions. Okay, post your questions. You get some answers. Um, reach out to us. Let us know. And I'm gonna put this. I'm gonna put this uh, uh, name of this group on here, man. 
All right, any more questions, guys? All right, so everybody, please um, post your email address, if you don't mind, in the city that you're in. So I'm going to try to save this and then send it out to everybody. I'm going to send everybody, hopefully, a copy of this as well, so that if it's something that you guys miss, um, of this, sure. you'll be able to, you know, catch it on, on the next one. So I'll catch it on the replay. <laughs> It's called. Uh, let me see. Let me Just moved from Dallas. From where, Calvin? The Mid City Network Group on Facebook. Okay. Where, where you move from, Calvin? Okay, DC and New York. So, all right, so we're going to go ahead and, and uh, get off this thing here. Let me ask you guys a question before we get off here, man. Did, did you get anything from this training, from, from this uh, meetup? Anything? Did, did you get anything from it? Yes, we understood a whole lot, actually. I liked the wholesaler marketing. I understood how to do it and uh, some leads we got to start from looking at things. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. I like it. All right. Excellent. Appreciate it. So if you guys did get some from it, please reach out to some other people. Um, let them know what, what we're doing. We're trying to you know, build a community over here so we can help multiple people if possible. Um, and again, I'm going to send you guys, I just posted in, on a Facebook group. Um, well, on the chat here, the Facebook group it is. As soon as I see it, I'll let you guys in. You know, go ahead and get on there, introduce yourself to everybody, and um, look forward to seeing you on there as well. And uh, we got we got a our podcast launch next month, the second Tuesday of every month. Uh, small business stand up. We're gonna be we're gonna be dealing with uh, business stuff, um, uh, also financial literacy, as well. So a couple, you know, about about four or five different um, young entrepreneurs in the business world, man. We just sit out having a conversation about business. And, all that good stuff. So you will, I will send you a link to that as well, so you guys can join. Um, yeah, welcome to the South. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, Jason said, "Welcome to the South." All right, hey man. Any 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 final final uh, thoughts, Jason? Just get started. Just get started. Just just I mean, really, just just get started. Don't overthink it. Don't overanalyze things. Just get started on something. OK, yeah. to today, get started on something today um, and, and don't like I said, don't overthink it. Don't overplan it. Don't try to think about what kind of contract you need. Don't think about any of those things yet until you find somebody who is showing interest in selling their property. And then from there, we can walk you through the rest of it. Absolutely. I think I think Jason stole my saying. Man, I, that's my thing, too. Just get started. It may seem like a lot, guys. Like I, I use this analogy, right? So if, if you never uh, rode a bike or ridden a bike before and somebody try to, um, try to write out how to ride a bike to you and you've never, never ridden one before, it wouldn't sound right. You'd be like, what do you got to do? What? It's not until you get on that bike and you, fell, you, you fall off a few times, scrape your elbow, your knee and all that good stuff, then you finally catch your balance and, and now you're jumping ramps, right? Same thing in real estate. You have to get started. And as you go, you're going to see different things, you know, that different things. And you may find a niche that you want to kind of really focus on. But just get started. 30 days from the day, we need to hear some positive feedback from you guys, man. I need to know that you guys are getting this information and that you're applying it. All right? So after saying that, man, my name is Jay Wicker. And my co-host, my guy over here is... From New Wave Investment is <laughs> new, new, yeah. Why do you saying that? Man? I don't know, man. <laughs> you gotta change your company name, bro. <laughs> uh, well, you can. I mean, we can use either one of them, man. Because you know, we've got New Way Investment, we've got JD Enterprises, we've got Property Partners, uh, depending on where we are, and then we've got uh, Single Family, depending on what city it's in. So we Dallas Single Family Equity Partners. So it it just depends, man. Depends on what I want to work with that day. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget, man. You guys, reach out to Jason, man. He's that tech guy, man. He get you guys right, man. So 
that being said, man, I really appreciate you guys, man. There's one down and a million more to go. All one right, down. you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Appreciate you, Jason. Oh, yeah, man. It's all good, brother. All right.